Okay, remember last week I told you to buy some PVH going into earnings, and they turned out to be much, much better than I expected. I'm a bull. I thought the numbers would be really good, but not this good. PVH, the apparel company that owns Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, and a bunch of other brands, totally blew away the numbers. Delivered an 11 cent earnings beat off a $1.47 basis with substantially higher than expected sales, up 18.6% year over year, rising margins. Even better management raised their full year forecast. What you have to hope is that we get some crazy tweet that doesn't like Calvin Klein, or we get some sort of just tsunami of selling, which does happen, because then I think you get an opportunity. Let's check in with Manny Chirico, the chairman and CEO of PVH. Learn more about the stunning quarter and the company's prospects. Manny, welcome back to Man Money. Good to see you, hey, Darren, Jim, nice to see you. All right, yeah. Manny, usually there's one. Okay, there's one cil- cylinder that's hitting. The other one may be hitting soon. Uh, international and domestic, Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger, best I've seen, right? Yes, very strong. How is that possible? Uh, look, the strength of both brands. The, uh, we're making, we've made over the last three years significant marketing investments behind both brands. I think the brands have done a phenomenal job in hitting their target consumers and really aligning with marketing that's resonated with the consumer. And it just shows in the numbers. And great product at quality value prices works. Uh, there was an outfit, I, H&M, talking about inventories today. Someone was saying, isn't that the tell for the consumer? Inventories are lean throughout your system, aren't you? Yeah, very much so. You know, we're chasing it. We're, at this point, we've been chasing inventory. We're going into growth. I think we're planning the first quarter of next year up high double digits. High uh, double digits, the, Manny. High teens. And Manny, we're we've really been around for a long time. I, I don't think we've ever heard that that's what you're planning for. Uh, really having a... It, the fourth quarter you touched on, and it seems like we're really set up for the first quarter, halfway through it, uh, in very strong position. Now, some of the places that are selling this have to be stores that are in the mall. Oh, absolutely. Big, uh, you know, our, our Tommy, for Tommy Hilfiger, our biggest U.S. customer is Macy's by far. Well, Gannett's doing a, a good job there, Jeff. Jeff Gannett. does a great He's job He's doing a there. good turn. And you really are seeing it. I, w- I was in the stores in January, and I've never seen the inventories as clean in, uh, in Macy's as I've seen then. And obviously now they're set up for uh, early Easter, and I think they're really clicking. All right, global synchronized uh, economy. Uh, I, you know, I've been to your uh, stores, Kaffersendam, uh, Confer- the beautiful uh, shopping district of Berlin. I have to believe that Germany, that Britain, Spain, all great. Uh, Europe is on fire for really? us. You know, even, uh, a brand even as big as Tommy Hilfiger, which has, you know, significant, significant market share, we're seeing high single-digit uh, growth in sales. You know, our order books for fall with Tommy, uh, for 2018 are up 15 percent, so we're really these feeling strong new about brands, that. Manny. No, these are not. But and, and it is it, it the strength is has surprised us, but <laughs> we're riding it. And we're also uh, it, with with Calvin Klein in Europe, a brand that's underdeveloped in that region of the world compared to Tommy. You know, probably about 40, 45 percent of that volume. We're seeing, you know, we're seeing 25 plus percent kind of growth with Calvin. So Europe is very strong for us, as is Asia. Now, I want people to understand that we spent a lot of time with a strong dollar. Or you'd have to back it out, this or that. Even after you back out a weaker dollar, these are some of the best numbers you've ever reported. Yeah, I think that's correct. And I think, you know, for us, we suffered through the foreign currency pain right. being such a large international player in 15 and 16. Fiscal 17 has got, kind of been flattish when it right. came to currencies, but as we're turning into 18, and that, it actually should be a tailwind for us. So uh, we're looking forward to experiencing that. Okay, many people say, well, what is Amazon doing to them? And I say, well, they're partners with Amazon, right? It's been good. A big business for us, and we've really been able to work closely with Amazon on key apparel, particularly for the Calvin Klein brand, but also our heritage brands. And uh, that whole digital area, we don't talk specifically about one customer's kind of, but that whole digital area for us is our fastest growing, and sales there are up in excess of 20%. So uh, we've got both our our e-commerce business coupled with theirs. How's the Chinese channel? And also, uh, some people are saying, well, they must be worried about tariffs, but I've said you've always found the lowest cost producer wherever it is in the globe. Well, yeah, so look, we're, uh, we're totally opposed to tariffs as a way to solve problems. There's clearly issues with China and the trade policy, and I think the administration is appropriate to go after them. 
But I think the way to do it is really target those industries that those abuses are going on. And apparel is, doesn't, uh, is not one of those. Uh, but clearly, we need to level the playing field in trade. And I give the administration credit for really going after it. Okay. Wow. Really? Yes. Even though it might damage your business at a certain point? Well, I just think, I, I don't think that the, the apparel is going to be one of the industries that hit with tariff. It doesn't make sense. We're already paying a, a tariff for, if from, Japan, uh, from China of, of approximately 25%. I can't imagine that the administration will put another 25% on apparel, footwear, and related products. So, I, you know, to go after the other areas, I'd like to see us negotiate with China. I'd like to see us to come to terms, uh, utilize both our other partners around the world, mm -hmm. because some of the trade practices aren't fair. Okay, uh, <laughs> what's something that was odd, man? You're the guy to ask. Uh, jeans tax? It, it was a jeans tax. People were talking out of Europe. I have not. I, the, I have to be France honest. France was thinking about putting the jeans tax on. Well, I mean, you we, know, wow, we would totally be opposed. Right. To that. I mean, it's I, also I mean, been I, a, it's we, jeans has also been a category that's as a apparel category that's been under pressure globally and just until recently. So right. I don't know why. Don't worry. They, they also wanted on liquor, and, <laughs> and uh, I think that these are things that you do when you're just trying to make some noise. noise. I mean, Hopefully. if you're really going to combat world, uh, let's say, tariffs by throwing up you know, something against the Calvin Klein jeans, I don't think it's really the statement that maybe you're trying to I make. would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Well, anyway, you have to hope that the market goes down to be able to get in PVH because this was the best quarter I've ever seen. Manny's probably been on the show more than anybody else. Manny Trico, chairman, CEO of PVH. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.